We greet you in the name of our Father, our Creator, Son Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and our Guide. My brothers and sisters, today was a marvelous day that we was able to stand in the pulpit at Friendship Baptist Church to declare God's truth. What a wonderful experience it was to highlight and elevate and to praise God for who he is. And I want to take the time again to share this message with those on YouTube all over the land that we still serve a God who's good and his mercy is everlasting. Again, so many churches are still closed and people are ready to get back to corporate worship and I still think this word that I'm going to share with you today is still fitting, no matter the date, no matter the time, no matter when you may go back. I believe this word is a fitting word for every one of us who likes to go to church and who like to enter into corporate worship with others who share the same views and same values with us. So allow me to go to Psalms 122. Psalms 122, verses 1 through 4, for your reading. Again, Psalms 122, verses 1 through 4. And you'll find these words penned by the psalmist David. David says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go unto the house of the Lord. Verse 2. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Verse 3, Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Verse 4, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. And for a few moments or better, allow me to highlight the text. It says, let us go. Let us go. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to allow the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart to be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, let us go. My brothers and sisters, if you can remind yourself like me that it is a good thing to get into the presence of the Lord. There's no greater joy than allowing his spirit to fall fresh and anew upon us to remind us that his presence is very near unto us. And I'm so thankful that every time I go to church, there's an expectation that God will meet me right there to able to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. For my church and my church alone, it has been 85 days, almost three months before we uh, went back into the sanctuary. And so it was a glorious day for me and my church that I pastor at Friendship. But the good news is the very first moment we stepped inside the sanctuary, we felt God's presence there. And then if it was his will that we would meet and greet and to have worship in that place. My brothers and sisters, although the doors all over the land has been closed, there is an expectation that when God opens up the church, when he opens up your church door, you can sigh, which means that let us go into the house of the Lord. Can I tell you, his word is still, is still relevant. His word still has to be studied. His word still has to be meditated on. His word still has to be preached. Yes, audios and video sermons are great as such as I'm doing right here. But my brothers and sisters, there's nothing like getting in the presence of other believers. And you know how it is. Oh, what a time we will have when two or three get together calling on the name of the Lord, reminding of his promises that he made to his people, that he promised to never leave thee nor forsake thee, but he promised to always be there to take us. My brothers and sisters, we always have to give thanks to others who continue to encourage and inspire to do the work of the Lord. Ministry is not easy, but God makes things possible because Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My brothers and sisters, 
our lives due to COVID-19 have been disrupted. And then on the, on the midst of that, these protests, this racial injustice have caused us to a different turn in life, caused people to survey the scene, destruction of property, destroying of the land, innocent lives being taken. My brothers and sisters, God never promised us that. He wants us to live a life that's pleasing unto him and not without chaos. There's so many things, my brothers and sisters, that allow us to take our eyes off the Lord. We must keep our eyes focused on him. We must stay within his word. No matter the depressing news agents and things that goes on around the TV, sometimes we have to turn off the TV and allow us to focus, looking to the hills which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from the Lord. So I believe in this season, God is telling us as believers, as his children, what he says in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, look what he said. He said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your soul. My brothers and sisters, the background, the background, the background of this particular psalm, Psalm 22, is a Davidic psalm written by David himself. I, I don't know when he wrote it, but the good word is he, he pins things to remind us as believers to reflect on God. I, I believe the psalmist is reminding us that every time he has the opportunity to step in God's presence, he's not going to forsake it. He's not going to give up on it. He's going to make himself available to gain and get in the presence of God. There's joy when you come into the house of the Lord. There's joy, there's, there's peace, there, there's hope, there, there's love within the house of the Lord. And so he says unto us, what Jerusalem was for Israelites, the church is to the believer. Hmm, my brothers and sisters, we must cherish our house of worship. Yes, it's a physical building, but it's a gathering place that allows us to meet God there and God will meet us there that we can praise and uplift his holy name. But our scripture that David highlights, we have other authors. Isaiah chapter number two, verse three says, and many people shall go and say, look what he said, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of David. And he will teach us of his ways and will walk in his path for out of Zion shall go forth the law in the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Zechariah 8 chapter 21st verse, it said, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us, let it go again, my brothers and sisters, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts, I will go also. My brothers and sisters, when we look at David's message, when we think about the scripture in context, this morning or this afternoon, no matter where you are, it could be next week, next year, whenever it is, the psalmist says, I was glad. When somebody say, let's go to church, you don't have to think about what you're going to wear. You don't have to worry about all of that. All you want to make sure that you prepare yourself to be in the presence of the Lord. And my brothers, as David penned this, David loved the Lord. David was a God chaser. God, David knew what God had done for him, past and everything. He knew that even though he was locked in a cave and couldn't go forward or back, he knew God was his protector. He remembered in Psalm 23 that God was his provider and his sustainer. And when you have an encounter with God, when you realize what God has done for you, you can enter into his sanctuary and you can praise his holy name, realizing that he's a good God. He looks beyond your faults and he still loves you anyway. 
This is probably speaking of the physical house of the Lord here on earth. But then David also reminds us that this is also another place that one day we can meet God there, a place called heaven. Jesus, I went and prepared a place for you that one day you may be where I am. But in this season, my brothers and sisters, I can hear David saying, one more time, one more time, Lord, I'm glad to be in the number one more time. The minute, my brothers and sisters, you step inside of the church, if it's been a while, if it's been a few weeks, if it's been a day, it don't matter what it is, it's one more time to give God praise and glory for all that he has done. So in David's case, he was excited just about the thought of going to church. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the old church would have wooden floors. We'll be stomping and we will be shouting and we will be giving God glory and praise. But David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. You Can you see the anticipation that was going through his mind? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. He knew that by being in the presence of God, that God sitting over his mercy seat, that God was going to forgive him of all his sin. That God was going to give him new opportunities. My brothers and sisters, every chance we get, we must approach God's throne of grace with thanksgiving in our heart. Asking him for his grace and his mercy. I can truly say, I'm thankful for the possibility of getting back in the church. I'm thankful that although Monday through Saturday was I was downing out, didn't figure out how I was going to get it. But when Sunday came, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, going to God's house can sometimes be more of a chore than a delight. But the sumness was a delight. It was a delight for him. He understood who God was and what God could do for him. And when we look at this time period, my brothers and sisters, as a pilgrim, they attended one of the three great religious feasts. And here it is, he was excited to worship God's people in God's house. I remember, I remember my brothers and sisters as a child, I, I would wake up, put on my Sunday best and be in the car before my daddy was in the car because I was excited my family my dad taught me the, the very acknowledgement and presence of going to church and what it stood for about praising God for who he is and what he can do. And you always want to train your child up in the way that they should go. So when they're older, they should never depart from it. So my brothers and sisters, at an early age, even I became a God chaser. Because God, I wanted God to fulfill my dreams and my desires on what I had on the life that I was to live. My brothers and sisters, when we find worship as a chore, it may be because we have sin in our life. It may be because we've been church hurt. We may be, uh, whatever the case may be, we'll forget about church, but we shouldn't forget about God. It's not the building. It's the God that controls everything. Because when you're close to his presence, my brothers and sisters, you're hunger for worship. You're, you're hunger for his word. You're hunger for his spirit. Because you, feel, you realize that without him, you're empty on the inside. And can't nothing satisfy your thirst like God's spirit. My brothers and sisters, we ought to worship him in our homes. But that's not enough. We must go to the house of the Lord. We may pay our homage to him right there. You know what the Hebrew writer said? Not forsake for the assembling ourselves together. Together in worship. That way we may on one accord lift up his holy name and praise him for who he is. My brothers and sisters, the journey can get hard sometimes. 
It takes all of us together, working together, doing it together, side by side, like a chain link fence that can't be broken, praying for one another, praying for one another. My brothers are sharing the word with one another, encouraging one another, inspiring one another with the understanding that God knows what we're going through. So here it is. The psalmist said, I was glad. It was the subject. It was the joy of David. And it should be the joy of you and I. The return of happy season when we go up to the worship. When we go out to worship, the house will be filled with joy. And I don't know about you, but when I go, I'm looking for my cup only. I'm not worried about what, who's got a cup on my right. I need God to fill my cup till it overflows with his blessings and his mercy. My brothers and sisters, the language is expressive of the happiness which is felt by the love of God for all who make their way out unto the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the heart, the heart, the heart is drawn to the house of prayer. When you go there, you understand that there are going to be some other people there that has your interest at hand. They're going to pray for you. You're going to sing praises unto his holy name. But this is a season of worship, of bowing down unto God, asking him for his mercy. My brothers and sisters, David himself understood the importance of getting into the presence of God. Look what he says again. When they said unto me, when it was said unto me, let us, when that time arise, look what he said, let us go Invite somebody else to church. Don't, don't just get in your car. Tell somebody about your church, your pastor, and everything that's going on. Invite them and say, let us go into the house of the Lord. The announcement was joyful. The invitation was welcome. It met the desires of their heart. It embraced the invitation to understand that meet God there. He's going to be there. So the question is, will you be there? Because God will surely be there. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Up to the place where God dwells. The house on which he has made for his abode. If the psalm was composed in the time of David, it might have referred to temple or tabernacle. Fixed by him, in Mount Zion. If it's a later period, like like Paul, Paul would have said it like he said it in 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. He said, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. My brothers and sisters, David reminds us the importance of being in God's presence. In verse 2, it says, stand. Here it means stationary fact. This means they are not leaving, but standing. The joy of the first verse has run over to verse number 2. It is such a joy just to stand within the gates. How many know you You just need to be in this present? It, it don't matter whether you're up front in the seat, whether you're in the back, you're in the middle seat, in the pulpit, in the choir stand, no matter where you're at. It's just good to be within the gates. Because how many know God is omnipresent? He's everywhere at the same time. But for the scripture, it points out that those who have traveled to Israel can vouch for the joy of just standing in the gates. How many know you just want to be in the presence? You, you just want to be in the presence of the Lord because you realize that God will be there looking upon his children. Then verse 3, David says, the city was not what we see there today. Possibly David was speaking prophetically. It is the very compact of the walls completely around it. The city, many times in the Bible, speaks of the church. We know that the church is also, it's compact. No matter how big it is, it's compact. It's compact so we can get together and worship him. 
family, friends, loved ones, all over the place. We're to come in to be able to sit ourselves down to worship the Lord. A close-knitted group family, regardless of race, creed, color, regardless of what it is, because God wants us as one family, born-again believers, to put aside our differences and worship him in spirit and in truth. In verse 4, it said, Now we see the important reason for going up to the temple. This is still the one reason to go to church today. He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And how many know he is good? You may not look like it. You may not done anything good for you, Lester, but I can't count all the ways that he's been good to me, but I know he looks beyond my fault. And even this morning, he woke me up, started me on my way, gave me activities of my limb, portion of my health and strength. Then he clothed me in my right mind. And to me, that's enough to tell the Lord, thank you, right there. But he says, there was 12 tribes of Israel. But there was one thing that kept them together. It was God. You can view God as a rubber band that holds the whole world together. You can view him as super glue, the one that holds things together. Or you can view him as a potter, the one who's able to put things back together once you have been broken and and and, and broken hearted and, and cracked in all different places. God is able to seal all cracks and put you back together again. So he says, the temple in Jerusalem was a gathering place of worship. The family of the tribes will come at least three times a year to complete, to be able to worship him. My brothers and sisters, most sermon outlines suggest having three or four points, but my mind couldn't shut off. So allow me to share my heart in these 10 areas surrounding worship to stimulate your mind. Because worship is important and the Lord has given us six days to work in one day to worship him. Even him himself is our example. He said he did all the work, but on the seventh day he rested to understand that he needed rest. And when we come in God present, he's able to give us the needed rest that we need. And that happens when we rejoice and praise his name with singing. First thing I see, my brothers and sisters, is Worship is personal. He said, let us go. Let us go. Our decision to attend worship must be personal. Even if nobody else shows up, we should make our way out to the house of the Lord to receive his holy word, to sing praises unto him. Even in Psalm 34 and 1, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My brothers and sisters, not only is worship personal, but worship is preparation. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you have to prepare your hearts and minds. So much going on. So many competing demands for your time and, and everything going on. So you must make time for the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. My brothers and sisters, Preparation is more than picking out a suit, your favorite tie, your favorite dress or hat. My brothers and sisters, you must shake it off. Shake off anything that will hinder you from making your way out unto the house of the Lord. Number three, worship is pursuing. Not only worship is personal, but worship must be pursuing. We must become a God chaser. For all of his benefits, Psalm 
Psalm 103 verses 2 through 5 said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who heal all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so thy youth is renewed like an eagle. Worship is praising, number four. Not only worship is pursuing, but worship must be an attitude of gratitude. My brothers and sisters, our attitude must to tell the Lord and others that I would have never made it without you. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I can hear David saying in Psalm 34 and 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. We have to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me. Every now and then, we ought to tell somebody because the truth is, we all have a testimony how God has brought us through. Whether it's healing, whether it's delivering, whether it's protecting, whether it's providing, whether it's comforting. Whatever it is, we ought to tell somebody else that we serve a God who's able to sympathize with their needs and to help them in their time of trouble. Number five, number five, worship is to participate. Not only worship praising God, but worship is to come ready to participate in the service. My brothers and sisters, too many people are sitting on the bench waiting to get in the game. But God said, I invite you in. Come on in. Let's worship. Let's praise him. Feel free to lift up my holy name. My brothers and sisters, the psalmist says, let everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Number six, worship is a pleasure. Not only are we are to participate in service, but we are to have pleasure when we come into the house of the Lord. When we enter into the pres presence of the Lord, we are to have pleasure. This is why we can say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. When we enter into, we can ask the Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. How many know this joy that I have? Number seven, worship is a privilege. Not only do we have pleasure in worship, but we understand that the privilege of being able to worship a true and living God is free to all. He says unto Nicodemus, you must be, you've got to be born again. My brothers and sisters, that gives us full rights. That gives us full ability to come into his house. Freedom to worship him in spirit and in truth. Number eight. Worship is a partnership. Not only is worship a privilege, but worship is a partnership. And the scripture says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. And then David in Psalm 34 and 3, he said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. And then number nine. Worship is a designated place. Not only is worship a partnership, but there is a place of worship where we can lift up our hands and where we can lift up our voices, where we can stomp our feet and we can cast all of our cares upon the Lord. There's no other place I'd rather be than right now to being in God's house, in his presence, praising and worshiping his holy name. For he is worthy to be praised. Number 10, number 10, number 10. Worship is power. Not only do we see the place of worship, but there is power in worship. My brothers and sisters, when we remove ourselves from the distraction, 
when we remove anything that's hindering us. When we focus on God himself, we allow his presence to come down. We allow his glory to come down. We allow his power to come down to fill us and sustain us with whatever we need to run this race with patience and an endurance. He's able. All we have to do is make ourselves available to him and he'll do the rest. My brothers and sisters, we're all called upon as children of the Lord to worship him, to serve him, and to praise him, and to love him with all of our hearts. My brothers and sisters, we must always look at worship through the lenses of the cross. Because that's really where worship began. Because when you think about all that God has done for us, he didn't have to do it, but he done it for the sake of his children, for the sake of saving his, 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 his creation. He done everything in order to ensure that we had the rights to come back to him. My brothers and sisters, John 4, 23 and 24, 23 and 24 says, But the hour cometh. And now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So as we hasten to a close, my brothers and sisters, allow me to share three additional things with you to get an understanding on what David said. Let us go unto the house of the Lord. Let us. Let us, let us go into the house of the Lord. What David was saying was a pattern of worship. At the beginning of creation, God set an example for us. He says in Psalm 100, verse 4 and 5, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures for all generations. Hebrew 10 and 25 says, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more that ye see the day approaching. The second thing is the place of worship. To escape the distractions of life, it's important that we go to a special and dedicated place, a meeting place. It may be your home, it may be your secret closet, but where it may be on your job, but where it may be in your car, but may, wherever it is, steal away and get into the presence of the God. But let us also go into the house of the Lord every now and then, every Sunday, every Wednesday for Bible study, every, every chance you get, we should meet God wherever the leaders have told us we need to be. A place where we expect God's spirit to meet us there. Number three, the person of worship. My brothers and sisters, we're not worshiping in a dead God. Our worship is gathered and motivated because of God's Son. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My brothers and sisters, I, I, I don't go to church for a show or fashion, but I come to church to realize that God's been good to me. It was all through the lenses of the cross, everything on the cross. And Isaiah said, because he was wounded for our transgression, because he was bruised for our iniquity, because the chastisement of our peace was upon him, because of his stripes, we are healed. My brothers and sisters, at the cross itself, it was over with. Because of his nails that was put in his hands, because of the nails that were put in his feet, because they pierced him in his side, and he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder, and he died, and then they placed him in a barry tomb where he stayed all night Friday, where he stayed all day Saturday, where he stayed all night Saturday night. But then something happened early. My brothers and sisters, it was early on that third day morning. My God and your God, 
he allowed his son Jesus to get up out of the grave. Not with some power, but with all power in his hand. And regardless of what I'm going to, I realize that Jesus has redeeming power. He has comforting power. He has saving power. He has a power to transform life from dead to life because of what God has gave him. God gave him all power in his hands. And all we ask you to do is let us go into the house of the Lord that we may praise him for who he is and what he has done. Look what he said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, may this word bless you. May you share it with somebody else. I'm thankful for the ministry that God has given me and pray for me and I'll pray for you and this is a season that we must pray and join hands in unity. Pray one for another because so much is going on in the world and we need God's protection. We need his mercy. We need his grace. We need him to build a fence all around us to protect us from all hurt, harm, or danger and any matter of disease. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this message. We thank you for the house of the Lord that you have established in our hearts. We also thank you for the physical building that we're able to go and share and worship in corporate prayer and worship to lift up your holy name where we realize that you are truly worthy to be praised. Bless me as your messenger. Bless those that hear this word. Bless those that will share your word with others, Father God, for you have been good to us. You have been good, better to us than we've been to ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, until the next time, I ask you to be prayerful. Be patient, persevere, run the race that God is giving you to run, and then until the next time, I'll meet you right here. This is Pastor James Daniel, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, Volula, Alabama. God bless you. He keep you is our prayer. <laughs>